first of all, thanks a lot for coming along to my talk. Um, thanks once again to Lee Petty for the opportunity to come here and speak at GDC, talk about some stuff that I've learned. Uh, don't forget to fill out the questionnaire at the end, and don't remember, like, remember to silence your phones. Okay, so um, just over two years ago, I got into photography, and that journey has been something that, it's been like one of the biggest learning experiences for me. One that helped me kind of grow as an artist, one that helped me get out of my comfort zone. And in that process, I learned about art, about art direction, the technical side, and also things like marketing. And I really became curious how far I could push that. And that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about today. When I think back to when I was a kid, I was 10 years old, and I really wanted to be a game designer. Uh, my favorite game was Commandos Behind Enemy Lines, and I wanted to work for IDOS. I would have killed someone for a job there. Um, I wanted to live on the moon, and I think I had like at least have a futuristic sports car, which is pretty ambitious. Um, but by 18, like that, that dream was just gone and dead, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So I had this kind of high school report that basically said I was struggle, like struggling it in class, and like I was just super quiet. And so. I took a year out after high school because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I felt kind of lost, and I turned to video games as a way to escape. And so I played like so much World of Warcraft, um, and it really helped build my confidence in a weird way. Uh, it taught me about communication, um, teamwork, and leadership. Uh, and I would read, I would lay, uh, ugh, my words, I would lead uh, raids of like 40 people I'd sitting in my bedroom when in reality I couldn't even talk to someone face to face. So slowly over that year that I took out, it helped me build my confidence. And since then, and even now, these are the three things that have helped me get out of my comfort zone. The first is learning something new. The second is putting myself out there. And the third point is surrounding myself with talent. And these are the things that helped me land my job at Ubisoft. Uh, and when I joined, I was the youngest director at age 25. And what I focus on in my day job is visual identity. So, my job is to kind of interpret what a game is and translate that into visuals so that they're unique, memorable, identifiable. <clears throat> so essentially branding the games, creating the logos, motion graphics, anything that relates to the style. And so I knew that at the time, like throughout my career and the kind of year by year, I've just slowly been trying to push myself out of my comfort zone. This is my third GDC talk. And to do that, I knew I had to like put myself in the deep end. And when we learn something new, it's, uh, it's incredibly like, daunting. Uh, we, don't know, we don't know anything when we start. And it's, uh, sorry, one sec. Uh, artistically, creatively, we try and think of things that can help push us forward. So for me, that one thing that I'll talk about today is my photography. So believe it or not, these are actually the first photographs I ever shared online. Uh, it was kind of funny, because it's the thing that I love about photography. Um, we take pictures of stuff we care about. I, I just happen to love dogs. Um, and when I started taking pictures on my iPhone and when I started to travel, I moved from Scotland, then to England, and then to Canada, um, I would start to travel a lot, and I never really left my hometown. So I started to just take pictures on my iPhone, never really shared them, and I kept a private Instagram where I think, I had like 10 people, I think one of them's here. Uh, so a very small audience, and that's because I just felt this fear, these anxieties of like, well, you know, I. They're not like great photos, they're not anything special. And, but I was like documenting my life and enjoying it. And so everywhere I'd go, I, the, like, the biggest learning experience was understanding how the architecture, just how the cities in general had like different moods and different vibes. Um, so I'd go to places like LA for E3, uh, do press stuff. And yeah, just a huge important learning experience. And as I got more and more into learning stuff, uh, all of my shots on my iPhone, uh, I would just take my iPhone everywhere, and every day I would just start taking pictures. And the more and more I learned, the more and more I, I wanted to get better at it. So I started to think about composition, symmetry, um, just trying to find like, nice visual shapes in architecture or things that I'd seen. And I just got kind of like really addicted to it. And, but at some point I hit kind of a plateau, because I'm an iPhone and I can only ever take a picture of what's in front of me. And I wanted to kind of push that further, so I ended up leveling up. And so after I finished up a game uh, at work, I, I saved up for a little vacation to Tokyo. And I bought myself a DSLR because I found myself getting more serious about what I wanted to learn and maybe the artistic stuff that I could learn along the way. 
that's where I was like, you know, how far can I really push this? And in the end, like, I, I learned so much about just art direction in general. One of the first learnings I thought was, um, when I think back to when I was a kid, I just, I would freeze up when people were behind me when, when I was drawing. When I was at university, I would just like minimize all of my windows because I was ashamed of the art that I was creating. And it was really photography that pulled me out of that. So the question I would ask is like, you know, we spend so much time on our art, whether it's a game or maybe it's your music, any of this stuff, and how much time do we actually spend making sure that people see it? Because to me, at the end of the day, it's about like creating art that connects with people and you know, we get to share our vision and the stuff we care about. And it wasn't really until I captured this one image that I, my mentality changed because every picture that I'd taken before was merely just like documenting places I'd seen, stuff I'd ate, dogs that I saw. And I put this on my personal Facebook account and I had like, I don't know how many friends, 100 friends. Uh, five of them were like, hey, this is, that's a pretty cool shot. You should uh, take more pictures. And it really helped me like break out of that comfort zone. And so from there, it was like it's just a real turning point. So there's this taxi driver in Shinjuku in Tokyo. Just happened to take the picture, the composition's there. The guy's face just happens to be lit correctly. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out every day after that, every night, and try and find these moments. And so each day I had left of my vacation, I just went out and I took different pictures and I would post them on my Facebook. And at some point I started to think like, oh, okay, maybe I can branch out a little bit, go a bit further out of my comfort zone. Um, all the while, like realizing that I was taking pictures of stuff like signage, typography, the stuff that I was used to dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And then this image stood out in particular, um, and I sent it off to Smithsonian's photo competition, and it became a finalist in uh, 2016. And so two years on, when I look back at this image, all I can see are the flaws. So it's that idea of like progress. You know, I go from like just taking regular pictures to suddenly, like, ah, oh, photography is like really something that's driving me. The funny thing is, I shot this picture in auto because I didn't know how to use my camera, uh, even though it was like a pretty good DSLR. And I shot the image in JPEG instead of RAW because I really didn't know my camera. I literally got it the week before. The man's out of focus, there's blurring in the image, the composition's slightly off. Um, and it was actually, uh, my first GDC talk was March, so I'm like 2016. And I just came back, I did my first talk, and I felt kind of like, I don't know, like a little bit of a buzz. And so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna put my work out there because I spoke to like, people randomly. At this point, no one had seen my stuff. And so I sent it off to Kotaku. Uh, just because people encouraged me to do that. And one of the biggest learnings I think about in my day job, actually, what I focus on is really marketing art or like something that's going to summarize what a game is so people remember it and it's identifiable. One of the key points I would give off to someone uh, would be to create a press release. Uh, as artists, developers, whatnot, we already have this body of work that we're just kind of sitting on. And I go into that mentality of just like, why not just put it out there? So gather like five or 10 images of the stuff you have, write a little bio about yourself, um, and a little description about the work is, what the work is, and include your links. Best case scenario, someone is gonna share that and it's gonna go further than your own network. Worst case scenario, nobody replies, but you already have that work, so you like, just send off the email and see where it goes. And then it went online, and over that period of the year, went up on all these websites, um, which is crazy because it was just a vacation picture that I took that kind of inspired me to keep taking more and more. And so at this point, uh, you know, I did my vacation, whatever, went back to my day job, and I wanted to get better at photography. So I started taking photos every day, slowly and surely, uh, learning more about how to operate the camera, uh, learning more about the technical side. Uh, you know, if, it was, if I was at work, I'd go out on my lunch break and just go with other people who were photographers. They would teach me all of the different ins and outs of how the camera functioned. On my weekends, I would go out at night and just practice, practice, practice. Even when it comes to events like this, I'll message people and say, hey, does anyone want to go take pictures? So I set myself like little mini tasks to make it manageable. You know, like maybe it was like how to capture movement, how to freeze time, how to get closer to subjects because as someone is kind of awkward, I just never did it. And to do that, I knew I needed to kind of level up my gear, so I reached out to Canon, and they were able to loan me a bunch of different stuff. Um, so I thought about the areas I was lacking in just so that I could become more comfortable with those kind of things. And I keep training my eye, like simple shapes, symmetry, that kind of thing. 
And at some point I realized that I had all of this knowledge that I already had within my comfort zone, which was directing style guides, uh, being able to do different styles for different games or products, and I wanted to apply that to my photography. So I looked back at the things I was inspired by, whether it was Akira, Ghost in the Shell, Blade Runner, Enter the Void, and at the time I'd never really seen photography pushed to that kind of level because it was the point where I saw my photography less like documenting stuff and more like art. So leaning on my skills in graphic design style guides, I thought about like the use of color, uh, composition, content, in a way to make it consistent, to be distinctive, and so that people would remember it. And so I'd have like more and more pictures where I was thinking about silhouettes, composition. The thing about photography is talking about patience, like waiting for the right shot. Randomly, these two people happen to go by and they're like 50-50 split right down the middle, the guy and the girl, the umbrellas, and I was like, there was this kind of stuff that was just driving me. Other times I'd get a bit more creative because I was learning about the technical side and I would get flashes with gels and I would just place them in the streets and kind of wait at the end and take the shot. Um, almost like setting up my own little fashion shoot on the street, which I never really, I don't think people do that. So uh, other times I just capture moments, uh, thinking about my composition, nice clean lines and whatnot. And so these are just images and images. So then at some point I started just tagging different musicians or directors, songs I was inspired by. And through that, you know, I was able to kind of, I don't know, share my work and have people who liked the stuff I was into also get behind it. Um, things like, you know, if you think about art direction, we think about choosing the right silhouette, even if it was doing logos or it was doing concept art. I was able to kind of look through all my thumbnails and figure out, like, what, what was it about the image that would be, you know, would work? And I posted the image on the right, and I actually took about 2,000 different images on the first half um, to get to this, this one image. And I cropped out the stuff that was maybe not in the same fantasy of, like, cyberpunk or these kind of saturated visuals, and I darkened down a silhouette because I studied a lot of uh, Roger Dean, not Roger Dean, Roger Dean's sci-fi, uh, <laughs> Blade Runner stuff. Um, and I was able to kind of turn a camera around and readjust myself, reposition myself, whilst learning all of these new skills. And then at some point, like, I started to kind of just play with color, uh, play with mood, like realizing that I was capturing some moments that were kind of isolated and whatnot. I'd bring in the audio to link the people, and then I would also um, just think about what it was I wanted to communicate, using color to do that. And this is all the stuff that I was doing in my day job. So again, I was, I was randomly in Tokyo, and I saw this place just outside of Tokyo, which was, it just looked like uh, Midgar from Final Fantasy VII. And I posted on Twitter, and then a bunch of Final Fantasy fans and stuff looked at it. And so all the while, like, remembering that I never really put my stuff out there, and suddenly I have like this confidence, slowly by slowly, to kind of level it up. And this was one of the more recent pictures I posted. And actually at the time I, I looked at classic Blade Runner and I was trying to deconstruct what they did with their color palette and there was one shot in particular um, that I kind of wanted to match the feel of. And so going from like, I want to learn a new skill to here's putting my stuff out there, bringing me out, being able to share my work, one of the things I realized that held me back was um, all of the stuff I wanted to learn. And being able to get to that stage, I knew that the only way to do it was to surround myself with people who knew it best. <clears throat> and so, again, I just wanted to see how far I could take that. Um, and I started reaching out to different people because really what I wanted to learn about was portraiture. When you do street photography, it's quite like a, you know, it's like a, just me by myself, often at night or whatnot, it's going around by myself. And the thing I always struggled with was um, confidence, like face-to-face -face communication, especially the anxiety that I would feel of just meeting somebody new for the first time. And so I sent off all these different emails uh, ahead of the next trips I'd planned, whether it was LA or San Francisco or uh, Vegas, Tokyo. And I had a lot of people reply. Um, and so, yeah. I was able to learn from these people because they'd been in situations where they were already used to like posing and I never had to worry about that. I could see how a makeup artist worked. I could see how I don't know, they held themselves for different shoots, all whilst knowing that I'd never really done that. Like, these are actually, I never shot pictures of people at all before, maybe my, my nephew uh, at his birthday. But suddenly I, I, you know, I just had this confidence and I accepted the nervousness of like, you know what, I have nothing to lose, so I would just reach out to different people. 
<clears throat> on the bottom right, you see my message. It go like, love your work. If you're ever in Montreal, let me know. Here's my link. Nothing more than that. Put it out there, and I, I think it was that mentality of like, you know, today, tomorrow, nothing in my life's really going to change, so I might as well take that step, almost like tennis, and just serve it. And so what was cool is I got to meet these people, uh, and they were really inspiring to me because these are people that all actually had some kind of link to video games. Uh, this is a DJ called Danger. Uh, he's actually inspired by one of the, I think it's the Black Mage in Final Fantasy, so he has a mask, um, French DJ. And he actually did the soundtrack for Fury, which is a little indie game. Great. Uh, the other thing is he actually, he's a graphic designer, so he designs all of his stage graphics. He designs his logo, all his branding, handles it all himself. So I was like meeting these people, although I had this camera, it became this kind of device or way that I was able to just meet people and hear about their stories. Um, at some point, one of the, it's like one of the biggest J-pop bands uh, reached out. Uh, I noticed they followed me, so then I, I just sent a message. And at some point, they were like, hey, you're in LA. Why don't we, you take my picture? And I was like, cool. And this is actually the first shot of people I ever did. And it's just nothing special, but it's, uh, I don't know, it was that idea that I randomly was in Japan, like in LA, sorry, and um, people I'd never met had to take this picture. Another person I ended up like, reaching out to was Ryuhei Kitamura. And I knew his work from film. Uh, he made the movie Versus, Midnight Meat Train, things like that. One of the first Japanese films I ever seen. Uh, what I didn't know is he actually directed all of the cutscenes in Metal Gear Solid. So from there, like, I had this skill. I realized I got to know him, and he like, mentored me. I think he just kind of helped me out a lot. Uh, and it was actually because of him I got to take pictures of someone else that I'll show later. Uh, there's also Ashima Shirai. She was a climber. And so I think it's more of the point I get at is like, the fact that I'm here, I'm at my phone, and I was like, there must be some opportunities that I can seek and hunt down uh, just so I can learn more and learn faster, learn efficiently. On the right is actually Jessica Van, who's an actress. Um, she was actually Hannah in Battlefield 4. So it was, it was this surreal thing of like, you know, I'm making all the stuff that I care about. I'm channeling video games and whatnot and meeting people along the way. Um, at some point, I get the comic artists of this like Spider Gwen. And you, you can see the similarities anyway. But at some point, I knew I was in LA, so I, I reached out to one of the biggest Spider, -Man, Spider Gwen cosplayers. And it happened to be Hendo, who has a huge following online. She actually used to work at Square Enix, I think. And so when I was meeting these people, I had this kind of these anxieties, because I get really anxious um, when I meet somebody. And I didn't know what I would be able to talk about, how I'd be able to direct them, how I'd be able to meet the shot that I had in my head, um, finding the locations, being prepared for it. Um, two more points. Um, yeah, so as I continue, like just taking pictures of different people is something that basically I picked up photography, plateaued. Then I was like, I need to learn something more. I started to learn the technical side, I started to learn about lighting, consistency, and whatnot. And it was this that kind of led me to a fashion shoot randomly. Um, and so I, f I, f I was in Japan at the time, just on vacation actually, and I was directing five models in the middle of Tokyo, and I had seven days to turn it around. So as someone who was kind of works in AAA, uh, I used to do indie stuff in the past, but I wasn't used to that quick turnaround. So it was entirely like out of my comfort zone. Each model was from like a different place and yeah, had like a brief and had to match it. And it was a weird thing as a game artist because I spent so much time just, you know, at my computer or whatnot. I actually don't go outside that much. And so this was helping me to kind of just get out there, put my stuff out there. And it was a weird thing actually seeing my stuff physically, which sounds kind of weird to some people. Um, whoops, back. So yeah, um, I guess the craziest thing was like Nigo, who's uh, he works for Uniqlo and did Bape and stuff like that. So when I think about, you know, I was trying to build this talk, and originally they said, why don't you do a talk about your journey in photography? I was actually trying to think of the stuff that has really honestly helped me in my journey to trying to get to where I wanted to go. So the points that I made were, first one, like learn something new. I think one of the, the most important things is to keep learning different skills that can help impact the stuff that you do so that you can grow as an artist. Number two, <clears throat> put yourself out there. I think as artists, we think about the things that we're scared of. We're scared of if people won't like stuff, if they won't look at it, if, uh, 
you're honestly just wasting your time if you won't make money, all of this stuff. Uh, I learned to just forget about all of that, put myself out there in a way that I was comfortable with, which actually meant not actually speaking to people, but just reaching out. And I knew that the last point is the only way to progress was to actually be around people who were doing that stuff well. <clears throat> so I have like one last example. Um, this to me was like a surreal moment because at this point I've been putting my stuff out there and suddenly I lift up my viewfinder and it's Hideo Kojima on the other side and I was just like, mentally I was like shaking my cameras and stuff because I was just like, I'm not going to get a good shot of this. Like, it's just not going to happen. But then I realized that everything, you know, I'd practiced enough and I was comfortable enough with the camera. <clears throat> Any anxieties I had, it basically took like 2,000 pictures of just like, I better get something good. Um, and I knew I wanted to shoot. So the panic was like lesser than what I thought it was. And at some point I'm stood in front of him, it's just him in his office and I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like my background is mostly aesthetic pictures and I was just like snapping away. Um, so after a few days of like hanging out, I was hanging out and I was like, I need to show him something because I don't want to make him wait too long because I don't know. And I, you can tell actually the anxiety because I sent a picture of my, from my phone instead of the high res picture. So I was like, oh, I'd rather he doesn't see what the colors look like and all of this stuff. Uh, I sent him a DM on Twitter and I sent it to Hideo Kojima, so it was like sneak peek, and he's like master of the sneaks, peeks and stuff. So I was like, this is probably the most stupid thing I've ever done. And then to make it worse, I see the little blue tick and I'm like, he's like left me on red. And it's, it only been like six minutes, but it was like the most stressful six minutes of my life. And it was funny because as an art director, I've you know, been working like five years, nothing, you're always gonna feel these anxieties. Um, and at some point, they feel less worse once you kind of get out of your comfort zone. And he sent me the little thumbs up emoji. And I was like, because I was like, I was, I was like, he's not going to reply. It's not going to happen. I was just going to probably forgot I even existed. And what was funny is like, you know, I was inspired by the stuff growing up. I'm sure a lot of us played Metal Gear Solid. Some of us might know Snatcher. It's a cyberpunk uh, game. It the, I think it was the first game he ever worked on. And this was the image. And I took a bunch of other images. Um, and so yeah, the point I was making is just, it's a weird one where I, I learned a skill, but I was able to lean on the stuff that I was comfortable with whilst also just being completely out of my element. And I have one video which I felt summarized like my feeling. It's not gonna play the audio. Great. Further okay. into the water than you feel you're capable of being in. Go a little bit out of your depth. And when you don't feel that your feet are quite touching the bottom, you're just about in the right place to do something exciting. So a calf, but yeah, it's basically like, if you feel safe in the area you're working in, you need to go a little bit out of your comfort zone, a little bit out of your depth, because that's where you're gonna make the most interesting stuff. So sometimes as artists, we need to go out of our comfort zone, pick up a new skill, try a different style, um, do a lot of work to kind of slowly chip away at that. Go on a stage, speak at GDC. Um, things that help us move forward either a day, a month, a year, uh, but ultimately things that push us out of our comfort zone. That's all. Thank you. Um, I don't know how I'm doing for time. I can take questions. Five minutes. Uh, feel free to go up to the mic. Um, tell me where you're from, what you do. Okay. Hi there. Uh, Hi. My name is Brantley McCord. I'm an instructor over in Indiana, Purdue University, um, co-instructing while I'm a grad student. And so um, where we're at, we mostly try to develop tech artists. Um, and we're, we're kind of in an awkward position because we're mainly an engineering school. So not the best artists, but also not the best programmers yet. And we're working on that. But um, a lot of my students seem to have a reluctance to make a portfolio because they feel like they need to get their art good enough for the portfolio to show it first. Yeah. Um, do you think that holds them back, or do you think there is a threshold that they should get their artwork to first before they start showing it? So that's a good question. I guess the question is, like, yeah, at what point do you feel comfortable with your portfolio enough to share it, and maybe the process it took to make it? Uh, for me, I think it was after, after university and, again, after... I realized I wanted to move up. I dedicated a lot of my time to working on my portfolio. And I think 
uh, when you're starting out, one of the most important things is being able to, to realize what the quality bar is. Uh, me personally, I would go on LinkedIn, I would find all of the, the artists that were in the area I wanted to work in, and I would actually just reach out to them. And I would say, hey, my name's Liam, I'm just starting out. Would I be able to ask you some questions? And I'd just leave it. I always end up with a question in email, keep it brief. They would reply and they'd give me all of this feedback. Um, so I think the most important thing is really knowing where your work is in relation to where it needs to be so that you can really clearly identify the parts that you need to grow. That's what helped me personally. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good for time. OK. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think there's a room after, but cheers. Appreciate it.